and here we go and here we are live which camera am i on that one which one that one there go there david and then you see hello good evening and welcome to vt talk here on black wednesday wednesday the 12th of june 2013 that was the day that the brown sticky stuff hit the round worry worry thing and got splattered everywhere tonight's show is going to be quite different from what we've done before because it's all going to be based on you it's all going to be based on the people watching the show we want to know what you want to know i've got a couple of guests lined up to come in later on if we get to them we get to them if we don't we don't but as per usual as you will see i am joined by my usual host the bubblicious babe that that is the one and only sav who tonight who tonight is in the big monitor because tonight's it's quite an important show tonight isn't it sav it is it is indeed it's um it's been something of a day mm -hmm. and i think we'll talk about that something of a day right after the titles so welcome to vt talk Yes, tonight is a night I will never forget. Today is a day I'll never forget. June the 12th, 2013, the day we got sold down the river by the people who professed to look after us and keep us safe. And instead could very well be condemning loads and loads and loads of us to a slow and lingering death. Because, yes, today the MHRA decided in its wisdom that it would make its announcement as to what it was going to do. And it's been covered on every news channel throughout the UK and in, indeed probably throughout the world. And I've got some video here which I will play in for you so you can see what it's all about. This comes from Sky. Um, there's no point in me even kind of, you know playing in the babe stuff or anything else it's pretty much all the same so just in case you don't know what's been going on just in case you don't know what's been going on uh, he said finding the right button which is that one here it is office work of phil smoked 30 cigarettes a day for more than 25 years until he discovered e-cigarettes I've actually converted about six long-time term smokers to e-cigarettes. Really? Yeah. Really big advocate. Yeah, and some of those people have been smoking for 50 years. Wow. The electronic devices mimic cigarettes, but they don't contain any cancer-causing tobacco, and they're generally regarded as a healthier alternative. I've accepted that I'm still addicted to nicotine, but I find it doesn't seem to impact my health anymore. 1.3 million smokers in the UK are now using e-cigarettes instead and the Royal College of Physicians estimates that 5 million lives could be saved if all smokers followed suit. But their sale is unregulated and they can be sold to children, something that the government now plans to change. We've looked carefully at these products and we do have some concerns about them. They're not delivering the nicotine in the way they should, they don't have the nicotine that they have on the packaging Boom. and we think their quality should be improved. Boom. This is where e-lights are made in China. The industry is keen to show it is already well regulated but from 2016 e-cigarettes will now fall in line with other nicotine based products and will be licensed as a medicine. Buying an e-cigarette is significantly cheaper than buying a traditional packet of cigarettes. Now experts will count the cost to our health of using one of these. But supporters fear that regulation could dilute this growing market, drive up prices and ultimately deter smokers from kicking their deadly habit. Smoking is the biggest single cause of avoidable death, killing 80,000 people in England alone every year. 
Sadly, there isn't a solution to the smoking problem, not a single one. We need to do a lot of different things. We need to continue the work that we've been doing, which stops people or helps people to not start smoking, because that's the most successful way. And we need to have a variety of different methods that help people to quit. Phil believes e-cigarettes have saved his life. He hopes any changes won't put them beyond the reach of others who want to quit. Isabel Webster, Sky News in Bristol. And there you go, that was how Sky reported what the MHRA announced this morning. Now you might have noticed in the middle of that was a, a dapper chap in a suit, a guy called Jeremy Mean, who is the bloke that's been guiding this through, uh, more or less since its inception. Um, the whole of MLX 364, the consultation that apparently they took no notice of to come up with medicinal regulation. And what he said was, and uh, I'm, I'll paraphrase rather than quote, there isn't an e-cig on the market today. There is no current product that's good enough to get through the licensing that they intend to put together. That means, in words of one syllable, it is a ban on what you now use come 2016 if, if the EU decides to go for medicinal regulation. Now, Sav, I'm, I'm, I know you've been following this all day. On a personal note, before we go to chat, what do you make of it all? What you've just said there covers it exactly. Um, when I first read everything, it was like, oh, oh, this is terrible, this is terrible. But absorbing it and taking it in, it's basically saying, we'll do what the EU tell us to do. And that's what I got from all and <sighs> typical. Yes. Well, to some degree, that, that, that kind of plays into our hands. To some degree, mm. it plays into our hands because it empowers us to get onto the MEPs and get onto MEPs and, and, and start taking the fight there. But I think we need to probably run through a little bit of, uh, of what this all actually means in terms of what they've said and where they're at. And again, I'll bring up the, uh, the strangers calm. Here we go. And this, this kind of tells it like it is. This is what came out. This is the press release. The UK moves towards safe and effective electronic cigarettes and other nicotine containing products. All NCPs such as electronic cigarettes are to be regulated as medicines in a move to make these products safer and more effective to reduce the harms of smoke. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to come in at that point to make them safer and more effective, it says here. That's what it says, safer and more effective. In other words, they, they just don't want any of the current e-cigs uh, e out there on the market. That's, that's what the MHRA is saying. Let's go back to it and carry on with what it says. And uh, here it goes. Reducing the harms of smoking to smokers and those around them is a key government health priority. Our research has shown that existing electronic cigarettes and other nicotine containing products on the market are not good enough to meet this public health priority. Let me just highlight that. Reducing the harms of smoking to smokers and those around them is a key government health priority. Our research has shown that existing electronic cigarettes and other nicotine containing products on the market are not good enough to meet this public health priority. Now, Sav? Yes? My feeling is that chat might have something to say about that. <sighs> chat, I've got an awful lot to say. Uh, <laughs> I'm... I have to apologise, Chat. I'm never going to get all of their comments tonight. But there was a lot of people asking, how does this, if they medicalise e cigs how does it then stand with children? Because patches can be given to children as young as 12. Does that mean that they will then be given out e cigs after they've said that this is all for the sake of the children? Well, now, there's the point, isn't it? There is absolutely the point, and that could well, very well, be the case. The market thus far has limited itself to 18 and above on a voluntary basis. They had no need to do that. There's no current regulation that says you know, an eight year old can't buy them even. There is no current regulation to say that, but the market, the vendors, everybody, but everybody in the UK at least and probably Europe wide has said 18 or above or whatever the smoking age is in that country. Now, under medicinal regulations, 
12 year olds can go and buy an RT over the counter at Asda, Tesco, Safeway, Sainsbury's, other supermarkets are available. 12 year olds could go and buy e cigs. Now, I've been plowing through all of this stuff all day trying to get a handle on exactly how it goes. And there are screeds and screeds and screeds of documents on this. There's all kinds of evidence, there's all kinds of this, that and the other. What I can't find in everything that I've read thus far is exactly how they intend to do this. We, we know it's going to be over the counter, basically the way you would buy NRTs and I refuse to call them licensed nicotine containing products. That's just mealy mouth words. And a quote from Jerry Stimson, he says he felt stitched up by the very late inclusion of that term into the NICE guidance because Jerry Stimson sits on the NICE guidance panel and he feels stitched up that that was brought in because obviously NICE knew, as we said last week, NICE knew what the MHRA was going to do. So he he he's he thinks he's been sold down the river and I agree with him as well. Where was I? Yes, they're not saying exactly what level of medicines legislation or regulation they're going to put on these things. It's all going to be down to what the EU says. Basically, the hiving it off to the EU, which is kind of what we knew. Again, I'm going to keep on dropping into chat on this one, uh, Sav. I, I, I want chat to have their seat tonight. I want to get a good feeling for what's been going on. And I want them yep. to tell us what, they, what, what we need to be doing, what they want to know. So what have they got to say? Right, I'll read through everything that I've pulled out from chat so far. Um, Andrew Martin said this comment quite a while ago. and He said, my thoughts are that if the regulations only will apply to nicotine-containing products, is there a way that vendors could sell a premixed liquid without the nicotine added so the consumer who will be buying their nicotine liquid elsewhere could just add it to the mix? That's an interesting point. The, the downside to that is where are you going to get the nicotine if they get this through? Um, because the nicotine would have to be licensed. Now, my feeling is, listening to what Mean had to say, where he thinks these don't work properly. That's the bottom line. He thinks these don't work properly, and I think he thinks they give you too much nicotine. I think that what the MHRA would like to see is something that's as effective as standard NRT. And everybody knows how good NRT is. To coin a phrase, it's, it's, well, it's one of the family height, whether it's Utash height, Pylosh height, but NRT just doesn't work. We know that to be the case. We know what its efficacy is. How the hell the MHRA or any other regulatory body can turn around and say that NRT has any level of effic efficacy is beyond me. No more than 7% of people are successful with NRT at 13 months. Generally speaking, within the first year, 93% of people go back to smoking cigarettes when they use NRT. And that, I think, is the level of efficacy. That's the level of performance that, that the MHRA is going to be looking for. Assuming, of course, that the EU pats its backside and tells it it can. What else has Chuck got to say, Sav? Right, chat. I've also got to say, Liam D. Vapor said um, they've been playing dirty, in his opinion. A lot of people that seem to be with us have now turned out to be lying. Um, Rachel Coffey, I think that was regarding the Ash statement. Um, Rachel Coffey said the MHRA's decision is unlawful, so they're basically saying, please take our bottoms to court. <laughs> and she also added on e-cigarettes will never be regulated as medicines in the UK either this will be overturned or a lawsuit will do so Kronos is um, oh that was about the children we've already covered that um, Vapor still said the government are worried about losing revenue so why don't they set up factories in the UK making batteries and charge more job done um, Paul XB said it's all sold and sealed with the EU FMRL said, more effective equals no flavours and very low strength nicotine. Peter Collins has said, no doubt some licence looky like you will be classed as more effective than what we're currently using. Yeah, and I know which one. Yeah, Lazy Vapor says, if these e cigs are so dangerous, then why don't they ban them now rather than giving us three years before they take them over and make money for the government? Swifty McTavish says, so this would mean all our bottles of e-liquid will be gone and we would only be able to buy a sealed unit. 
Yep. Alan Banks says, so if the EU decide that they are not medical devices, does that mean that the MHRA will drop all of this and go back on their whole statement? Um, Doodlebug said, MHRA regulate medicines, e-cigs are not medicines, therefore the MHRA cannot regulate e-cigs. And Funny Trickster has said, but as usual, nothing at all is mentioned about tobacco itself. They must be getting paid by big tobacco and big pharma, they just don't like e-cigs because they work. Yes. And that's what chat's had to say so far. That's, well, you know, I, I, there's, there's very little I can disagree with there. I've got to see it. Um, I, I'm, I'm just reading through the rest of this press release. Um, and honestly, it beggars belief. It really does. Some of the utter crass lies. I mean, you might have heard during the course of the video we played and I forgot my microphone was live. And I'm, thank God I tend not to swear when I'm in this particular studio. But... Everything that Jeremy Main said, three things he said were bull. Pure and utter horse feathers. Bull crud. Insert as many asterisks as you want. It was a whole load of custard in custard, is what it was. Each says, today's announcement, let's go and have a look at it. Today's announcement follows a public consultation on how to regulate these products, which demonstrated widespread support for medicines regulation from the public health community. Scientific and market research into their safety and quality, including how they are used, has underpinned this decision. Again, let's come back to all of this. Which bit of the public health community? Because Clive Bates is public health, Jerry Stimson's public health, Jack LaHousie is, uh, um, is, is public health, and there's a whole load more that are public health. Have they gone with the Pochka Langers on this? They've been misinformed badly. Badly, badly misinformed. But let's, let's blast on. Because there's, oh, my blood's boiling. You might be able to tell that, Sav, can you tell? I can tell, yes. Yes, my, my blood pressure's been up all day with all of this. Um, <laughs> let's, let's go to this bit here where it says, recent public health guidance published by the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, nice, supports the use of licensed nicotine products in helping people to cut down or stop smoking. You'll notice they've, they've stopped using this quit term now and smoke and cessation and all of those terms. It's now stop smoking. It says the quality of NCPs can vary considerably, which is why licensing them as medicines will allow people to have the confidence that they are safe and are of the right quality and work. Now, this point in time, I'm going to quote a conversation I had with my wife earlier on who was reading the BBC news website report on this and she took to understand by the language that was used that it was all right they were just going to put some regulations to them but e-cigs would still be available as they are now in just about every shop they would just have these regulations on them and, and there was nothing to worry about you'd still be able to get them and when i said well yeah but remember what jeremy mean said that no current product is good enough to get through medicines regulation. There's no vision egos. There's nothing like that. There's no juice. There's no bottled juice. In other words, everything that's on the market now, everything that's on the market now will go if they get their own way. I'm going to say that again because everybody needs to know it. Everything but everything that is on the market now will go don't make any mistake about it don't believe otherwise if the mhra gets its own way this effectively is a ban on everything that we are using today everything a ban outright outright sav what's chad got to say chat i've again got loads to say um Cerulean C said, there is an amendment to the TPD which says all countries should have the right to impose stronger restrictions than what the TPD allows. Um, Mitch Dogger said, the big pharma bots are protecting the millions they make from their drug treatments relating to smoking related diseases, not just patches and gums, etc. Simon Phillips said, the MHRA is funded and partly staffed by the pharmaceutical companies, it's all about money. Mona has said that what the public health community, including the doctors who say absolutely use ASICs. Flame and Katie's also said it's not about health, it's about money, power, politics and big pharma. 
Uh, Taffy Lad has said the MHRA are full of it. Um, well, kind of said that. <laughs> the problem, <laughs> the problem I had today was all the anti-smokers and work were all pointing their fingers at us vapors, telling us what we were doing is wrong, believing everything that they said. My favourite comment of the evening so far is from Adam Orga, and he says, "I think the Daily Mail wrote the MHRA's press release." <laughs> I wouldn't be at all surprised if they did, to be honest. Um, according to the, the, the press release that's come out from the MHRA. Uh, it says, electronic cigarettes are currently regulated as consumer products in the UK. That's true. Their use has grown rapidly, with an estimated 1.3 million people using them in 2013. That's come straight from ASH, hasn't it? Because mm. it was ASH that came up with that. Yep. The MHRA's public consultation ran between February and June 2010, and the responses to the consultation were published in March 2011. Now... I read them, and trust me on this one, there were many, many hundreds of responses, and you could count six that were in favour of medical regulation. The rest didn't want it. So there's transparent government for you. Um, the MHRA commissioned its own research on, on products available for sale in the UK. This confirmed that nicotine levels can be considerably different from the level stated on the label. Our investigations also found that the amount of nicotine per product differs from batch to batch, so this casts doubt on how useful these products are to people who want to cut down or stop smoking. Now, I'm going to bring a guest in after the adverts because we're there already. Um, and if you're ready, Ben, it'll be Ben Potter from UK E-Liquid and e Wizard. I'm going to bring Ben in because Ben knows a lot about juice and how it's put together and ben has got his own take on this so we'll go to the adverts and when we come back with a little bit of luck and a following wind ben will be with us see you in a couple of minutes Right, now as you can probably see, Ben's in Sav's usual place, trying to get himself sorted out. Um, he's, he's disappeared off the face of the planet for the moment. This is the technical stuff. We love the technical stuff. We'll be able to hear. Put your fingers together. Yes, I heard that. Yes, we've got you, Ben. No. As soon as you put your headphones on, it went off. Right, he's gone. I'll call him back. Um, tell you what we'll do. While I'm waiting for that to occur, um, somebody has suggested that Occupy stuff might be a good idea. Yeah. We know a great place and a great date. 29th of June. Watch this. Occupy. 
Now we've got Ben, um, but Ben can't hear us. Um, so I'll tell you what we'll do. I hate this kind of thing. Sav, tell me what chat's saying while Ben tries to get on. Right, I've had a couple of comments from chat. The Morgan has said, it's pretty much all set up to go this way. I think anyone standing back could probably say that this was on the cards. They wanted this band because it works. Mr. Scotchpie said, it may be uncomfortable to think this, but maybe we need to get political. Uh, Lazy Vapor said, it's not the likes of us guys, we will find a way around this, but it's the future Vapors that we need to fight for to overturn this custard. Um, there's a lot of people, again, echoing all those things. There's been a lot of talk about, can we still put tomato sauce on our burgers? Um... Stephen King mentioned Alan Sugar was asking about getting into e cigs. A man like that with his power could really be beneficial. Disco Dares says, History shows us that there have been many zealots that push their irresponsible and sometimes fatal actions on the innocent sin that they are doing it for the good of the people. Loads of stuff. And there's talk of people hopefully coming up to the knees. More the merrier, as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Um, right, look, while, uh, can you hear us yet, Ben? Yeah, I can hear you. Great, it's all sorted. <laughs> okay, um, just before we go, go to Ben, let's, let's just talk a little bit about the knees, mate. Um, the new venue has got, across the road from it, a huge, big, beautifully mown lawn. It's where the Great North Run finishes, if you ever watch that on the telly. We can accommodate half a million people there. And I'll tell you what I'm thinking. Here's what I've got in mind. I think if we can get as many of the 1.3 million vapors in the UK today up there for the knees meet, we'll get the BBC down, we'll get the ITV down. Rebecca Taylor, I'm going to invite her. I'll invite Linda McCavan. I'll invite Martin Callanan and Fiona Hall, our local MEPs. Let's get everybody there. Let's get as many MEPs, MPs, and as many people, as many television companies, as many news groups. Let's get everybody there and let's get something said from us, the people that use these things and the people that might be using them in the future. Because that's it. As far as I'm concerned now, the gloves are off. The battle starts now. We've got to take action. But I'm not going to run any further. Let's... Uh, Let's go across to Ben. Ben, what the hell have you made of what's been going on today? Um, which I I've only got the the end of the whole barrage. I was I was out of the office for most of it, but <sighs> we were expecting it, but shell shocked when it actually happened. Um, I'm not going to go too far into uh, ins and outs of it because I let leave that to Catherine she's much better positioned and knowledgeable on that front but in terms of our position we're going to completely and utterly support ACETA financially um, and if they need any work done from our side then obviously we'll help with that um, we're going to fight it to the bitter end it's it's our business we've got cust um, staff that rely on their wages we've got customers that rely on the service that we offer them and we're not just going to sit back and let them 
let them pull the rug underneath us. So, yeah, you've got Issa Wizard behind you as well as Aceta and all the other members as well of Aceta. That's that's excellent stuff. There was a, a, a post on UKV from Cloud9 earlier on that basically smacked to me of civil disobedience where they were saying that no matter what, didn't matter what it was, they were just going to carry on selling ASIGs and the MHR8 would more or less go and stuff itself. A sentiment which, by the way, I wholeheartedly agree with. What's, what's your take on that? I mean, would uh, UK E-Liquid and, and, and ASIG Wizard go down the route of civil disobedience and sticking two fingers up to the MHR8 and their lackeys uh what i'm feel free to say exactly what the situation is uh we're in the position of if there is literally no option left and we're, we're forced down that route then we will pursue it um uh, we're more interested in the liquid side of thing whether they'll allow that or they kind of force you down the cartridge cigar like uh route we don't really know yet but that that's basically a we've lost it we there's nothing we can do basis so it's not something that's on our minds right now but it's it's there if we need to to carry on uh trading keep our staff and keep providing customers with something at least even if we have been restricted on what we would like to offer right well coming back to the juice because this is this is i think one of the important things you, I don't know how much juice you move on an annual basis, but it must be many, 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 many thousands of litres, I would have thought by now, yes? Uh, yeah, it's it's millions of bottles a year. Right. Well, and I know you regularly get your juice tested, yes? Every, every single raw ingredient uh, and every single finish, final, sorry, get my words out, every single finished mixed product gets sent off for GCMS testing, um, it then gets kept in freezer storage for four years and our batch codes can actually uh, trace itself back to the person that checked it in, the person that applied the label, the person that bottled it, when that particular raw ingredient was brought in, where it was order f ordered from, when it was ordered. Um, and we're actually in the process of arranging a function on our website whereby you can type in that batch number that's on our labels and it will pull up the full GCMS result for that liquid and every raw ingredient associated associated to it. Right now so listening to that that sounds about as as vigilant as you can get in checking out what the uh, the actual ingredients what the nicotine concentration is and all of that kind of stuff. In your experience how much juice is out of spec? How, ma how many times do you find, I, I don't know, let's say 24 milligram, or it says 24 milligrams on the bottle, and it's either 32 or 18. How often does that happen? We've never, ever, ever had it. Ever. Never? Never. Well, there you go. So, would you, and I'm not going to try and put words in your mouth, but would you uh, would you agree with me that it would appear that Jeremy Mean is lying through his teeth? Uh, I think it's more naive misunderstanding or not understanding at all. I mean, they they use the common uh, argument that they found find found toxins inside e-liquid uh, without realizing that that one of those same toxins is in one of their in all of their approved. NRT products, so they're essentially saying that their own products are a load of crud as well. Yeah, well this, this is the bit that gets me. I mean, they've, they've said during all of this that by licensing e-cigs as licensed nicotine-containing products, this will prevent youngsters from being, I think, recruited is the word that McCavan often uses. And yet, we know that under medicinal legislation, and I've just brought the bit up here, where it says that uh, once licensed by the MHRA, electronic cigarettes and other NCPs will be available for sale as over-the-counter medicines and for healthcare professionals to recommend as nicotine replacement therapy. They're available to 12-year-olds. How the hell does this protect the children? It doesn't. What have you got to say? Well, the, if you've got a piece of paper saying that it's approved, it's all right, isn't it? I mean... It's all red tape and a load of rubbish. It's if if you've got a piece of paper that you've 
basically bought to prove that something does something that we already know it does, then it's all right to give to a child. Uh, but, you know, if you don't have that piece of paper, it's a disgrace to give it to a child or even think about giving it to a child. I've, I, it, it, I've, I'm, go, I'm here to tell you, you can hear, I'm gobsmacked. I mean, I'm totally speechless by this. <laughs> well, I'm not really. The fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, at the moment, at the moment, e-cigs from e-cig wizard, from safer cigs, it doesn't matter who it's from. From any of the vendors in the UK, if you are under 18, you cannot buy. Whether it's over the counter, whether it's on the internet, whatever. Because you can't have a credit card till you're 18 either, can you? No. And, and I'm, it, it, at the end of the day, uh, kids get hold of things no matter what you do. So uh, they seem to think that imposing something that's already imposed anyway, an 18 age restriction is going to mean that a child can never ever get hold of an e-cig ever again. Not that they're interested, but there will be the few rebels out there that want it. I mean, kids, I see kids drinking on the street corner all the time. I used to smoke as a child uh, and kids still do smoke and that's an 18 year old product. Most of the time you need to look 25 and over. But you can ask someone on the street and they'll go buy you a packet of fags or you can get your parents to do it. You know, it happens. It's, it, I tell you what, it scares me how naive these people really are. I mean, there was a piece, I think it was in the Daily Mail yesterday, where it was on about a youngster, uh, 14 I think he was, had been given some nicotine gum at school by the school nurse and there were... I've got to get this right because I don't want to get it wrong. There was 90 milligrams of nicotine in this packet. I think 25, yeah it was, 25 um, gums. And he decided, or no it wasn't, it was 15 gums and he chewed the lot in 25 minutes and ended up in hospital. There's a big shock. Because chewing gum's chewing gum of course. Mm. And the fact that it's got nicotine in, well the kid may or may not have known that. But he decided to chew the lot in 25 minutes. And he was given this at age 14, it beggars belief. Um, so Ben, I, I know you've put out a statement. Do you want to kind of go through what that statement is about the whole malarkey that's gone on today? Uh, the, the final statement was just summarising the fact that we're going to financially help uh, ACETA um, and any other organisation that, that's fighting for the same cause. In, in taking legal action if needed uh, hopefully it doesn't reach that point but if it does then we will um, we, we've got uh, an invested interest in our staff and our, our customers and we want to continue trading obviously uh, from a business point of view as well so we're, we're in it for the long run and if we are backed into a corner where we have no other choice then we'll, we'll do what needs to be done to be able to continue trading the best of our ability well, but we we are talking to the MHRA at the moment, just trying to get a few details from them on um, the actual process and what they class as a product, uh, and just getting a bit more of an understanding of exactly what they're after. But uh, it could be talking to a brick wall at the moment, so we'll, we'll find out. We've only just started that uh, this afternoon, so. Yes, I think it's uh, I think it's fair to say that this is we're right at the very beginning. It's kind of gone back to the start, and I'm I'm really hoping that people will now realise, people out on the ground will now realise this is real, it is actually happening now. This makes this an actual real thing. The threat is there, and if we do nothing, we lose everything. Is that fair to say? Do you think? Yeah, I mean, uh, even if we didn't lose everything, we, we've essentially lost what, what we like to use at the moment. It's like going from an iPhone to a Nokia 3310, isn't it? Well, yes, and that's, <laughs> that's not something I would like to do. Sav, I'm absolutely certain the chat will have had quite a lot this year. Uh, let's give them a couple of minutes, then we'll go to the adverts and then uh, see where we get from there. All right, I've got quite a lot of stuff and apologies again to chat for all the stuff that I won't be able to get out in eight. Um, John Springer said, tobacco control simply don't understand or care why people use the very products they are trying to control. As a result they will never understand how or why e-cigs work. Um, Parrot Flock has said I own vaporarmy.com still building but I am willing to coordinate protests there if it helps. 
Ronald Ward's actually asked a question. He says, is this a ban on sales or on use? Um, and is there a civil or criminal penalty in place for still using these devices? Well, let's, let's handle that one before we go any further. At, yep. at the moment, at the moment, the MHRA regulates licensed medicinal products in the UK. There is nothing to stop anybody from buying worldwide and using what the hell ever they like, as long as it's, it's legal. I mean, obviously, if there's a, a ban order or if, there's a, if, if it's a classified drug, you know, class A drugs, class B, class C and so on and so forth, they're illegal anyway. But nicotine currently is not illegal for anybody to use. It's not illegal for anybody to import. There is no ban order. Ben, if I get any of this wrong, dive in and tell me straight away, will you? But I'm pretty sure I'm right. Mm -hmm. There's no ban order on nicotine. That would mean that you would be able to import if you needed to, because I know one of the options available to vendors is to move offshore. Now, currently, they haven't said, the MHRA hasn't said that it would seek a ban order, but the EU in the Tobacco Products Directive is seeking to end distant sales of tobacco products, anything covered, in other words, by the Tobacco Products Directive. And as we said last week and the week before, and we've been saying for a while, if certain amendments go through as they've been tabled, then yes, internet sales and distant sales would be banned and they would probably put a ban order on at the border. But to continue using, no, it's not, it's not a, an offence to use personally. Um, but it may become an offence to import, uh, which could put the kibosh on a few people. Um, we really, really do need to work on this. Sorry, Sav, what else was there? Um, it's a comment from Peter Stigard who says, You now see the conditions we are under in Denmark. Sales of nicotine containing liquid needs a permit that in Denmark costs around €300,000 per liquid, and so far no one has applied for a permit stroke licence. Um, Mark Shaw has said they are spinning it all so they can take control. Jeremy Mean has been told what to say, just like all those at the workshop were instructed on what to say. Moonlit has said, I like e cigs If I wanted medical devices, I would damn well go out and buy some. I do not, I have not, and they can go and get custard. <laughs> um, Jeff Bennion has said, dual use, let them have their medical e cigs just leave ours the feck alone and then the people can choose medical crud or normal working e cigs The Morrigan 1972 said, I would have to say they're dancing to the tune that the WHO is playing. Mark Shaw said, they are going for all out control and they have the backing from people who make a very tidy living out of smokers and the associated illnesses. Alan Fetcher said it should reach the point of legal if it should reach the point of legal action, two courts in Germany have ruled that a liquid is definitely not a medicinal product. And another of my favourite comments for people who like Game of Thrones, the MHRA is Joffrey Baratheon and Dave Dawn is Rob Stark. Long live <laughs> the King of the North. Um. <laughs> I'm a little bit naive on that one. Can you explain it? Or I tell you what, explain it to me during the adverts. We need to take would... a short break and then we're going to carry on with this because we need to take action and I want to run through what that action is going to be and try and give you an idea of what's going on. Um, so we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere.
And we're back in the room here on VT Talk on Black Wednesday, the 12th of June, 2013. I'm Dave Dawn, Sav's in the big monitor, and we've got Ben Potter from UK E-Liquid and uh, E-Sig Wizard. I keep on trying to put the two of those together to make a longer name, but I, I can't do it, I can't manage. Um, before we get too much further into the third half, I do actually want to put a big, big thank you and congratulations out to Mark and Thomas and Norbert for the German show they did last night. Um, I thought for a first go it was stunning and the fact that I was sitting here driving it while they were doing it all in Germany, big kudos to them. Well done lads. Um, keep it up because we need the Germans, the French, the Spaniards, we need the Greeks, we need everybody on board on this one. Um, we were just saying during the course of the break how brilliant it would be if 2,000 people turned up to the knees meet and all of the TV cameras saw just a great mass of people using this kind of thing, stuff that looks nothing like a cigarette. It would be amazing and the quotes they would get would be amazing and it would be so much better if the MEPs and the MPs were also there. In fact, I invite Jeremy Mean, but he might not want to come. Can't imagine why that would be the case. So we were, we were clattering through all kinds of stuff there. Um, what else does chat have to say? Because I know there's going to be a lot of questions on this and stuff we need to cover. There's a lot of stuff, but there's one question that I've just got to come in here from Vapor Man, and he's asking, where will that leave VTTV? Will they try and block us? They can try what the hell they like. Um, VTTV is going nowhere. Trust me. We're in this for the long haul. In fact... I'm looking at investing more in the technology here so that I can do better Skype, get more people in. I, I want to I wanna be here. Right. How, oh, Christ. I, I don't know how to say this. Look, these things to me are probably the most special thing that's ever happened in my life. Had these been available 30 years ago, I would still have my mom and my dad today and probably my grandparents as well. These are a life-saving gift as far as I'm concerned. They are the kind of thing that they're going to mean I'll get to see my grandson going down the aisle. That's how important they are to me. And if, if, if we here at Vapor Trails can help keep them going and, and keep things on an even keel, and, and, and fight these bastards that want to take them away from us, we're not going anywhere. We're just not. Um, Sav? Yeah, I've got a couple of comments from chat still. Um, Paul XB8, I mean, chat are 100% behind you on that, Dave. Um, Paul XB8 has got a very sad story. He says, I turned the life support machine off that kept my mum alive. She wasn't a smoker, but my dad was, and she had aggressive cancer, which killed her in six weeks. My dad died of cancer 12 years earlier. I do not want to start smoking again. Hardest day of my life when that sport was switched off. These regulations will kill people. That, that, that is exactly, exactly the point. What, yeah. what Jeremy Main has announced today, what Glenis Wilmot espouses in, in, in the European Parliament, what the Envy Committee might end up doing is going to cause death and disease all over the EU. And we can't just sit and allow that to happen. We've got to do something about it. We have to do something about it. Now, with the best will in the world, the e-cig industry is being tarred, unfortunately, with the same brush that the tobacco industry is being tarred with. And through no fault of their own, because I've known Ben since he got started, and we've taught a lot. I, I, would, I would trust him with me life, the same as I would trust Daz with me life, the same as I would trust most of the vendors that I've dealt with, with me life. None of them, none of them are in it for the fast book. There's one or two that are. I mean, I, 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 I'm going to lose friends here, but I saw an announcement from Gamucci today that said that they'll go and seek a license if they need to. They're prepared to sell out. I think they're just in it for the money and I couldn't give a tuppenny toss about them. I'll stick with the vendors I like and the vendors I know care about. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm burbling on. Ben, help me out. Uh seeing how emotional you got there i mean you would be 
slightly shocked at how many emails we get and phone calls completely unprovoked about how uh, you know they bought a e-cig for their husband or their wife or their brother or sister or whoever it might be and just saying very, very simply thank you because uh, we, we had an old woman phone us and say that you know her, her husband had been smoking for years on end and she tried everything she could including hitting him to try and get him to stop and nothing would and she she bought an e-cig from us and he stopped and uh, you get we get a lot of emails like that of people just saying thank you and and you don't really expect it as a a business just selling so selling a product to someone um that they would come along and then and then say thank you for for doing that i mean it's it's not so, we're not a, a charity but it's nice to see that and it does make you go home with a, a warm feeling in your stomach yeah ab ab absolutely i mean <laughs> I, I think the, the day a drummer walked into my studio with a looky lakey on and I got a drag on it and tried it, that was the turning point in my life. And I think that applies to so many people. And I think what the EU is trying to do, what the MHRA is buying into and by extension the British government, I think it's morally reprehensible. It's wrong. And they shouldn't be allowed to do it. They re I'm sorry, I've got a... Oh, they just shouldn't be allowed to do it. We've got to do everything in our power to stop this. We need, we need to be on to our MPs. Not just one or two, everybody. Get away down to their surgeries. They're usually on a Friday. Make an appointment. Go and see them and get them told. Get emotional. Tell them your story. Get hold of your MAPs, all of them. Let's email them, blanket them with it. Get them told. And let's, I think, also blanket the MHRA, Jeremy Mean. Let him be told so that he knows that, in fact, he's no better than a bloody murderer as far as this guy's concerned. We need to take action. We need to take it now. Sav, chat's got to be saying things. Chat, I've got loads to say. Um, Safer Six says, I don't just sell products. I am passionate about the products I sell. I love my job and I love my customers. Dan Chapman has said, I've given three egos away to friends and all of them stopped smoking. The industry is saving so many lives. The work that vendors and teams like Vapor Trails do to help everyone is another step towards saving vapors. Um, Screwbag said, I think the world is watching the UK and the EU to decide what to do regarding ASICs. If the UK fight back, perhaps other places will not even start the fight to try and ban. Andrew Martin says, I need a recipe for making my own e-liquid because there isn't a person or a government on the planet that is going to stop me vaping. The Morrigan says, people have the right to choose, but the MHRA is taking that right away. And um, Screwbag has said, every new customer that I get makes me feel like, hey, today I made a difference in somebody's life. Mm -hmm. And Lumi has said, where does this two milligram limit from Belgium come from? According to the nice letter I received earlier from the medical inspection, which is customs today, about my confiscated liquid, no nick at all permitted, not even two milligrams. And they took even my zero milligram. That is reality. Ye gods. And little fishes. Um, right, with regard to the EU, so I'm sorry, I've, I've got quite emotional about this. It's been a really trying day. It's annoyed me no end. It's frustrating me no end. And I was speaking to, to uh, Catherine Devlin of Aceta earlier on, and I'm, I'm sorry, Catherine, I'm just not gonna, we're not going to get time to get you in. Um, I would have loved to, but we're not going to get there. I think Ben's pretty much stated the case for a seat or anyway and the the, the backstop the the, the um it's the word up the fallback position is the court case and i'm ever so pleased to hear that ben and the other seat of vendors and i know tw is up for it as well are going to put the money in to take it to court if it needs to get there please god that doesn't happen but what we need to do what we need to do is to get our mps and meps all over Europe to support the amendments that Rebecca Taylor, Chris Davis, Engstrom and Fjellner have put together 
because they explicitly prevent any government doing what the MHRA has said it was going to do today, which is to classify electronic cigarettes as medicine by function. You would have to explicitly make a claim that they're medicines in order for them to be medicines. If you say they're not, they're not, and the MHRA can't touch them. Now that's explicitly in the Taylor Davis Fjellner Engstrom amendments and they need to be supported. You need to talk to your MEP and your MP and say that is what we want to happen. We've got to step this up now. We cannot, we cannot sit back. I saw somebody on Twitter earlier on today saying, well, it's two and a half years. There's loads of time. There's not. This is all going to be over and done and dusted by October if Linda McCavan gets our own way. That's when the first reading will be. It is my hope that we can make enough noise and get enough MEPs on our side that they force it into a second reading and hopefully force it into a new parliament. And then the Commission's got to go back and redraft it again from scratch. And that'll give us a little bit of time to put some pressure on. But we don't have much time now. Bear in mind, during August, the European Parliament doesn't meet. We're now halfway through June. And in July, in July, they're going to be voting on the amendments. We need to put the pressure on now. We need to be talking to MEPs now. We need to be writing to MEPs now. There's no point in sitting on our thumbs and hoping somebody else is going to do it. Nobody else can do it. We've got to do it. The users, you, me and everybody you know. Please, please, please get hold of everybody you know that uses e-cigs. Get them told, tell them what's going to go down if they don't get off their backsides and do something. We've got to do it. Aceta can't do it for us. Eka can't do it for us. We've got to do it for ourselves. Ben, would, would you agree with what I've just said? Absolutely. And we, I mean, we've been sending out, with every order, we've been sending out leaflets explaining to people how they can do it, giving them uh, a, a little snippet of information that they can put in the email uh, as well as sending out mail shots so all of our customers uh, are aware and they're continually getting informed every time they place an order with us so yeah I completely agree with the, the process of mass voices uh, does wonders okay lovely thank you for that Sav I, I, I see we're just about out of time as per oh, usual yeah. as per usual I want to give the last word to chat because, as I've said so many times before, not only have we got the best chat on the planet, you are the most important people in this. Yeah, so absolutely. what have they had to say? I had loads to say. I'll quickly read through what I've got. Um, Taffy said, sorry guys, but some regulation needs to be done. For example, in my local market, there are two stalls that sell A6 and A juice, and both did not know that the juice contained nicotine, so God knows what else they were selling. Um, I didn't get the name of this one, but how can it be legal in some EU countries and not ours? It was banned in Holland, but only for a week and then it came back. Michael Stephen Jackson says, it comes to something when you feel like a criminal where all you're trying to do is live a healthy life. It's ridiculous. Midge Dogger says, I have a second child en route. I don't want to go back to fags and deprive them of a dad. e six have had a huge impact on our lives and I dearly don't want that to change. And the last word tonight goes to Rachel Coffey who says, the time to act is now. And Rachel Coffey has got it absolutely right. Um, I would normally end a show by saying it's been a pleasure to have spent the last hour with you and with you as people. It has been a pleasure to spend it with you, but it hasn't been a pleasure having to discuss the execrable stuff that we've been talking about tonight. I hate having had to do this. I hate that the MHRA is doing what it's doing. I hate that there are people out there that are hell-bent on driving nearly five million, between five and seven million people in Europe back to smoking cigarettes by removing the very lifeline that is likely to extend their lives. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what needs to be done. I know I can rely on you to do it. I'll be doing it. We'll all be doing it. Until I see you tomorrow night for hopefully a bit happier show in the here's hour. Um, from Sav, from Ben, from myself. Um, thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves and your families. Be good to each other. Vape on, vape hard.